I move respect the last word. Gentlemen's recognized. Thank you. Anytime we address gun violence, we should also address the state of affairs of our society. We should address crime and mental health. We must also address the family unit, forging the future of our society. Look at the story of the young man who did so much damage in Uvalde, Texas. None of the latter seems to get any attention from this body, and the knee-jerk reaction is to always punish law-abiding citizens for the sins of the few. The answer is always to place more restrictions on the masses instead of holding the individual accountable. The problem is not being addressed today. The majority, instead of working in good faith across the aisle to find real solutions to these problems, are now here talking about protecting our kids with a bill that does little of that. This bill ignores the real mental health crisis in the country. It ignores the countless failures by the FBI and local jurisdictions in failing to act on actionable information. It ignores how the defund the police movement influenced school districts across the US to rid themselves of school resource officers and police. It ignores the school systems trying to replace the family by withholding information from parents about their own children. This social experiment going on in our military, our schools, and our society is contributing to this mental health crisis, the deterioration of family values, and our skyrocketing violent crime rates. The question was posed by the lady from Pennsylvania. What have we taught our children? It is a very good question, and it's not being answered today. Unconstitutionally changing the age for ownership of a rifle from the 18 to 21, as has been so um, clearly stated by others on the committee, does little to address the root causes I've described. Neither is creating a gun owner database through the IRS, one of the provisions of the six in this bill. After all, the IRS has not had a great track record of keeping confidential information secure, has it? Moving the goalposts, as often is done, only gets some talking points. Real solutions required reaching across the aisle and addressing all of these issues, not messaging that exploits tragedies to try and take away our rights and eventually have to be struck down by the courts. And I really think that the majority should be honest here today with the American public and you should come clean. And you should propose the amendment, which is what you really want, which is to repeal the second amendment to the constitution, because that is really what is afoot and has been over the decades as we've had this robust argument here in our country for a long time. Come clean, tell the American people what you really wanna do, Mr. Chairman, and that is repeal the second amendment. And I would just close by this. Uzziah Garcia, has been mentioned a couple times during this hearing. Um, God bless that young man and may he rest in peace along with all the others that perished in Uvalde. But I would also cite Uzziah uh, Garcia's uncle who said, do not politicize this. Do not polit politicize this before all the facts are known about what went on at that Uvalde school. Uh, with that, if I have any colleagues that would like time uh, yielded to them, I'd be happy to do it. I, I'd like you to yield to me if you wouldn't mind. I'm a colleague. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. 